Okay, now we're ready to talk about meiosis. Now, meiosis only happens in your sex cells or cells that are destined to become your gametes. And the reason we go through meiosis is because we need to get our cells from being diploid, remember two copies of each chromosome, to being haploid. So meiosis is the process whereby we go from diploid cells to haploid cells. And the reason we have to do that is because during fertilization, a haploid cell meets another haploid cell and together they create a diploid cell which can become a new organism. So we need to make sure we're a haploid when we go through fertilization, otherwise we'll end up with too many copies of chromosomes. So we're gonna start here with our normal setup. We have two copies of chromosome one and two copies of chromosome two. And when we go through S phase, we're going to do it in the same way that we did for mitosis. We're going to duplicate all of our DNA. Now remember I told you that the magnets that we're showing here in our model are supposed to be the centromeres. A lot of people get confused that when you duplicate your DNA, you started with four chromosomes, but after you duplicate your DNA, you still only have four chromosomes. And that's because the chromosomes are held together at the centromere. And when we count how many chromosomes we have, we count centromeres. So in real life, you would only have one centromere here holding these sister chromatids together. In our model, we're using magnets and it doesn't quite work out the same way. But after you duplicate your DNA, you still only have four chromosomes. And remember, these are called sister chromatids because they are genetically identical. They're just copies of one another. The phases in meiosis are the same as the ones in mitosis, so P-M-A-T. The difference here is that we're gonna go through two rounds of division, meiosis one and meiosis two. So in meiosis one, we have prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. And in meiosis two, we have prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. The good news for us is all the stuff that's sort of different happens in meiosis one. Meiosis II is pretty much the same thing as we've already talked about in mitosis. So we go through S phase and we have duplicated our DNA and when we are ready for this cell to go through meiosis, we're gonna go through meiosis I. So the first phase is going to be prophase one. Now a lot of interesting stuff happens in prophase one because as the DNA starts to condense, it actually forms these things called tetrads, where the homologous chromosomes come very close to one another. And this is called synapse or synapsis. So they're gonna synapse, they're gonna do a synapsis. And they're gonna get very, very, very close to each other and they're actually gonna sort of wrap around each other. It's not quite long enough for me to show the wrapping, but you can kind of see how these guys are wrapping around each other and these guys are wrapping around each other. And when they wrap around each other so closely like that, sometimes what can happen is that the DNA gets transferred from one sister chromatid or from one chromosome to another chromosome. Now, if they transferred between the sister chromatids, it really wouldn't make any difference because remember, sister chromatids are identical, but what happens is one homologous chromosome might switch with another, switch genetic material with another homologous chromosome. And what this is called is crossing over. So we're just taking genetic material and we're moving it from one chromatid to another chromatid. And you can see now we've got some differences in our homologous chromosomes. That's called crossing over. Synapsis and crossing over happen in prophase one. Other things that happen in prophase one is what we're used to. The nuclear envelope starts to break down and the centrioles are going to start to make their spindle fibers and start to move apart. And of course the nuclear envelope has to break down so those spindle fibers can get in. 
because the centrioles are on the outside of the nucleus. The next phase is when the nuclear envelope is completely gone. And that's going to be metaphase one. So our centrioles are here, and what they have done is they have formed spindle fibers that are attached to either side of our tetrad. Tetrads are when you have two sets of homologous chromosomes stuck together. And remember, in mitosis, all of the sister chromatids lined up on the metaphase plate. But here, the tetrads, or the homologous chromosomes, line up on metaphase plate. And they get pulled back and forth and back and forth until they're lined up like this. And then they're going to separate. But something else happens in metaphase. So sometimes, the way I have it done here, you can see that the majority of the DNA on this side is the yellow. And the majority of the DNA on this side is the red. And then on this tetrad, I have it the opposite direction. The majority of the DNA on this side was from the paternal parent and the majority of the DNA on this side was the maternal parent. And so sometimes it can line up like that opposite. Sometimes it can line up where all the maternal DNA is on one side and the paternal is on the other one. And if you can imagine in humans, we have 23 different chromosomes, you can get a lot of different combinations of how these things line up. So this is called independent assortment. Oh, running out of room, that says assortment. So independent assortment basically means that the tetrads can line up either like this or like this. And when they get separated, they're eventually going to go into their own cell. You can get quite a lot of genetic variability from independent assortment, and that happens during metaphase one. During anaphase one, the homologous chromosomes are going to split. And the homologous chromosomes are going to separate, and what we've done right there is we've gone from a diploid cell to a haploid cell. So these cells that we're going to be making are now going to be um, N. So they were 2N because we had two copies of every chromosome. But now that we've split the homologous chromosomes, we only have one copy of chromosome 1, and one copy of chromosome two. In telophase one, we start to reform our nuclear envelope. And as before, our DNA starts to condense. And then we're going to go through cytokinesis, where the entire cell is going to pinch together in the middle, and we're going to form two new cells. And if we look at our two new cells, we have one copy of chromosome one, in sister chromatid form, but we still call it one chromosome, remember, because it has one centromere. And we have one copy of chromosome two. And that's going on in both of these cells. Our chromosomes are still stuck together in this sister chromatid structure. So we have to get those apart. And that's pretty much what meiosis two is all about. So I'm just going to use this cell over here to show you what happens in meiosis two. It would be happening to this cell as well, but it will get too messy. So we have this cell over here. It has a nuclear envelope, and we're going to go through meiosis two. And meiosis two is gonna start with prophase. So we're going to start to break down the nuclear envelope. We're gonna have our um, centrioles start to separate, and our DNA is going to condense. In metaphase two, these guys are going to line up on the metaphase plate. In anaphase two, we're going to separate our sister chromatids. So now finally we separate our sister chromatids, which is pretty much what we did in mitosis. And then in telophase two, we're going to reform the nuclear envelope and during cytokinesis, we're going to split these into two cells. 
And you can see now that we have one copy of chromosome one and one copy of chromosome two. And we have one copy of chromosome one and one copy of chromosome two. And because of all the different things that we've done, they are no longer genetically identical. And if we take our other DNA, you actually end up with four different cells. All genetically different. And all haploid. All have one copy of each chromosome. And these cells can then go and go through fertilization. Okay, that's it for today. See you in class.